We've all sat through our share of absolutely pointless discovery meetings. You get this low effort inquiry from your website. Dear sir or madam, I would like to inquire as to the cost of your 1040 tax preparation services. For some reason you take the meeting and you know what they really just wanna know is what your rates are. Taking these meetings, even simply filtering through the messages can be a massive waste of time, particularly when the bulk of those inquiries are coming during your busiest season. But what if we could cut out those inane meetings with science. Let's build a thing. We're using Airtable today. Woohoo! It's been too long. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna replace that nasty old built-in contact form you've got on your website with a more robust one from Airtable. In that contact form, we're gonna ask the questions that will tell us whether they're a client we actually want. We'll set up a scoring system and then we'll automate the follow-ups. All right, step one, let's make the form. If you don't have an Airtable account yet, wow. Use the affiliate link in the video description when you sign up and you'll float my Airtable bill. I've got some continuing ad on Airtable as well if you're just getting started with it. But this is a good, actually pretty simple starter build. Okay, we're in a brand new base. I'm gonna name this Client Inquiry. Get this stuff out of here, I'm a pro. So what are the things we want to collect on that form? In general, that's what our fields or our columns are gonna be. How about email address, first name, last name, website. Do you even business? Annual revenue. And this first key, I usually just make this an ID, like a unique identifier. If you set this to auto number, it'll just number each of the records. So first one comes through, it's one, two, three, et cetera. Now, anything else that would indicate whether they are a client you would want or not. How about industry? Let's create a multi-select called industry multiple select. And here we're gonna list our options. Maybe you work with a couple specific industries, but you still do stuff for other ones. Maybe your niches are lion taming, taxidermists, and alchemists. And we'll put a catch-all for something else. Now, anything else? What are kind of some of the warning signs when you pick up a new client? Maybe why they're leaving their last accountant? You could ask that if you wanted to. Honestly, that answer filters out like a bunch of clients for me, but let's leave it at that. So how do we turn this into a form? Well, by default, Airtable is laid out as a grid view. Here are all the views listed on the left-hand side here. We're gonna create a form view or say intake form, create new view. And you'll see here, it's already populated our form with all the fields we just created. At any point, we could say open form and see what it looks like out in the wild. Not super sexy right now. Now, any of these fields you could remove if you wanted, add them back in, and helpful, we can relabel them. So this is an email field, but I'm gonna make it something a little more narrative. What is your email address? If they can't pass that test, then they're not even pass and go. I'm gonna toggle this to be required. Before that, actually, let's make something useful up here. So maybe this is contact us. Thanks for reaching out. Tell us a bit more about yourself. You could add your logo here and a cover image to make it look better, but nobody watches YouTube videos over like 15 minutes. Okay, first name, acquired, last name. Um, this would only apply if they have a business. So let's actually drag this below, do you even biz? Uh, let's rename this. Do you run a small business? Require that to be checked. And maybe a check mark isn't the right one to do there actually. This is a good example of something where like you see it in the wild and you're like, eh, that's not quite right. So let's go back to the grid view. Do you even biz? Let's change this to a single select and set the options. Yes, I own a business. No, I don't own a business. Hit save, flip back over to our contact form. And we're gonna change the style here to a list so it shows your options. Do you run a small business? Yes, I own a business. No, I don't own a business. Maybe own wasn't the right vernacular to use there, but whatever. Okay, that one's required. Now, if they don't own a business, they don't need to see these options. So what we're gonna do is toggle this to say show field only when conditions are met. We wanna show it when do you even biz is yes, I own a business. Now you can get really granular with the conditions here, which is pretty cool, because it means you can build actually like pretty long forms with 100 questions, but maybe only 15 any specific person ever sees. Change this to what is your web address? What is your approximate annual revenue? Only show this when do you even biz is yes. Lastly, make this conditional as well. What industry is your business in? And switch this to a list. I don't know why I made that multi-select. You would probably only be one of those things. I'm just gonna gloss over that. 
You got your submit button here. You can rename that to whatever you want. Let's do it. I'm gonna to toggle off the Airtable branding. You just have to be on a paid plan to do that. You could redirect to your website after that. Probably be a good idea. Watch it when you you show a custom message, thanks for submitting the form. Automatically notify yourself anytime somebody submits one. But let's pull it up, see what it looks like. Thanks for reaching out, tell us a bit more about yourself. Blah, blah, blah. Do I run a business? Yes! Woo. So, you could link to this form like this, or you can embed this smack dab on your website. It's gonna give you the code right there. Every single website builder I've ever used has an embed option. You can drop that sucker right on your website. It's gonna play nice on mobile. And rather than simply asking for a name and an email, we've collected some data that tells us, is this a person that we actually want to work with? And honestly, 80% of these leads from the data we've collected here, you probably won't, depending on how much filtering your website is doing. Now let's talk scoring. Do you have a scoring system for new leads right now? Probably not. Most firms I've talked to don't but it's actually a really helpful exercise to go through. It forces you to actually measure what makes a good client, what makes a bad client. Now, this could be a simple point scale, totally arbitrary. Let's say my favorite type of client right now is alchemists. If you're an alchemist, you automatically get 50 points. So let's make a field over here that is a formula field. This is an industry score. We'll create a bunch of scoring factors and add all of those scores together to get to a final score. Then have a threshold where if the score is above that, we'll talk to them. If it's below that, GTFO. So this is industry score. It's gonna be a formula type field. And this is gonna be an if statement just like you'd have in Excel. So if industry, you can reference other fields from your formula with curly brackets. So curly bracket, industry, curly bracket. If industry equals alchemist, then 50 points. Otherwise, no points for you. So let's select an industry, see if that works. I think I misspelled alchemist. Yep, alchemists. 50 big ones. Now we could add something else here. What's one of our other industries? Let's say taxidermists get 20 points if industry, nope, industry equals taxidermists, 20 points, otherwise zero. Close one, there we go. Okay, so an alchemist and taxidermist walk into an Airtable base, we got 50 <laughs> points and 20 points. Now, life hack alert. If you find yourself in nested if statement hell, the better formula to use here is actually cases, that's not what it is, what is it? Switch. Bingo. So it's basically a way to list out a whole bunch of conditions. So rather than this nested if statement thing that we've all done in Excel. So if weeks until deadline is four, planning, if it's three, it's execution. Just a tidier way to list out a bunch of options. Okay, back to our base. So we've got an industry score. What are the other factors? Well, maybe you're best suited for a certain size or you keep getting these new startup businesses and they just aren't working out. So we want a somewhat mature alchemist. In fact, oftentimes we have industries we will work with of any size, but then if they're a general something else, the parameters are a little more specific. So maybe that's a better example. You'll work with alchemists, taxidermists of any size, but if they're outside that industry, they need to be more specific. Maybe only those over a million a year in revenue. So let's add a revenue score, the formula field. And if annual revenue is greater than 1 million, that is a number type field, so they have to put a number in there. And you get another 50 points, otherwise you get no points. So if this person has 2 million in annual revenue, oh, there it goes, you just didn't wait long enough. Uh, sometimes the formula fields take, I don't know, three to five seconds to update. So 2 million in revenue, they get 50 points. Likewise, if this person had one and a half million in revenue, they would get 50 points as well. But if your alchemist only had a half million, they wouldn't get any points. And then this all gets rolled up in the total score. So you can have as many of these things as you want. You get the idea. New field called total score formula. We're gonna add our industry score and our revenue score. All right, now, what is the threshold at which we actually want to talk to them? How about we say it has to be over 40? This is where we can build some automated follow-ups. So let's create a couple more views. Views of inquiries that we want to talk to and those that we don't want to talk to. We're gonna create a grid view called good inquiries and another called bad inquiries. So you see all of them listed on the left-hand side here. Our good inquiries are gonna be filtered based on the total score. So I hit filter, we're gonna add a condition. We're gonna say where the total score is greater than or equal to 40. And now it's gonna be filtered down to just those records that are above 
40, which is all of them right now. Now, bad inquiries are gonna be filtered to say total score is less than 40. They should all go away. Now, let's complete our form here with some real data. So yes, I own a business, approximate annual revenue, but they're an alchemist. We'll submit that. Thanks for submitting the form. So I've reloaded the form and let's put in a second person who we don't actually want. So cheapskate at AOL.com. They don't even own a business. Let do it. Okay, so we've got two people now in our base. Go back to the view that shows everything. You got the one that has a score of 50 and the one that will have a score of zero. The good one should show up in our bad inquiry or in our good inquiries view. There we go. Bad one in our bad view. Yep, there's a cheapskate. Score of zero. So now this is where things get spicy. Let's talk about Airtable's built-in automations. This is like Zapier had a baby with your Airtable base. We're gonna create a custom automation and anytime there's an inquiry we want to talk to, we're gonna email them your Calendly link. I don't know, like materials to tell them a bit about your firm. Maybe a file upload link if you want them to upload their prior year return. We wanna push that email out to good inquiries. We wanna push a bad email out to bad inquiries. Let's do the good one first. So we're gonna name this automation good inquiry email follow up and our trigger is gonna be anytime a record enters the good inquiry view. So it's not just anytime there's a new record or any form submission. It's only when it enters the view that says, yes, this is someone I wanna to talk to. So when a record enters the view, specifically table one, you can have a bunch of tables in your base, we just have the one, and the view is good inquiries. Now let's run a test and it'll grab a record that is in that view already. We can toggle this down, it'll show us the details. So it's in table one, in the good inquiry view, Here's a record ID, and then you can click this and see all the field values. ID four, Logan at AOL, Logan test, McGraffman. So we have grabbed our one good inquiry record. Now, what do we wanna do with it? We wanna add an action. We're gonna send an email. Now, if you click this, it's Airtable's like built-in email client. More likely what you're gonna do is send it via Gmail or Office 365 Outlook email here. You can connect either of your accounts so that it looks like it's coming from your domain. How that works is the exact same as just this vanilla Airtable one we're gonna use. So who are we sending it to? Well, we're gonna send it to the email address they provided in the signup form, right? So we hit this little plus that lets you insert data from something else. Here are all of the steps in our automation. The first one here is step one, the record that entered the view. I'm gonna say continue, and here's Logan at AOL. We're gonna insert that. Subject, thanks for reaching out to firm name. Hello, I'd love to talk to you. Here's me Calendly. Steve, whatever. You can attach files, you can run a test. Sorry, Logan at AOL.com. Test ran successfully, we preview the email. Good looking email. The ones you send via Airtable's little thing will have Airtable in the footer. I usually only use that for like internal stuff. And that, my friends, is it. Turn it on and you're good to go. Now for handling bad inquiries, you guessed it. All you're gonna do, Create another custom automation that handles new records in the bad inquiries view. Probably just tells them, hey, sorry, we're not taking clients right now. Only working with small businesses. I don't know, you could make that actually pretty intelligent based on the info they provided. Now, that's helpful. What's even better is doing some of that filtering on the website itself. Like saying, hey, we're a great firm for alchemists making over a half million dollars a year or something like that. So consider that in your website copy to weed out some of that stuff. The upside of this form is you can get really granular. Do you have employees? Maybe you're pushing it into payroll services, we wanna do more of that, and that's a factor for your score. How about accounting system? What are you currently on? Or are you open to switching to the system we want you on? A lot of good stuff like that that you could ask upfront. I would take care not to go too far. Some of that stuff you want to walk them through in the discovery process. But this is a really helpful exercise to just think through what are the attributes of a prospective client that would make them a good client. So. Protect your time during tax season by doing some lead scoring. It's honestly as simple as that. Like 30 minutes, you set that up, you're good to go. Now, if that was still scary, I'm gonna share a link to this base. You can literally rip right off in my weekly newsletter. Sign up for that one at subscribe.jason.cpa. And did you know I've got free Airtable continuing education? What? What? Yeah, wow. I know, check out the video description. I'll link to that if you wanna learn more about Airtable. And remember to use that affiliate Airtable sign up link because my Airtable bill is expensive. It's not actually that expensive. It's like 40 bucks.